Good day, good day, good day to one and all. Mr. Creamy here again. And we're here for another episode of In The Kitchen. Today again, with me, I'm here with the one and only. This is Creamy, Natasha. Welcome back, honey. We're going back in the archives today, back to the foundation. And Mr. Creamy as an entity, today we're making homemade cheesecake, but with a twist. We're making Bailey's cheesecake today. And if time permits, we'll do some special little toppings so that we'll know how to dress it up to make it a little fancy if it's a birthday or occasion or anything like that. We're going to start with, we have digestive biscuits. Yes. This here is five rolls, All right? This would be more than enough to do two 10 inch. We're doing two 10 inch cakes today. Right, we should need about four, but just as a little contingency, we have the extras. And we are going to puree these in the food processor. We can add a few more. Now, this is the traditional or uh, version of what you would have, like the graham cracker. Now, when we make cheesecakes, we do, normally do, we used to do, I should say, several different flavors of cheesecake. And for each flavor, we try to impress the taste buds somewhat and also be able to impress the flavor by modifying the crust to the filling of the cake and the topping. So as you get each bite, the bite will be more complex as to one monotone flavor. You now we talk about that all the time about building flavors, right? And this is the product here. We have finished grinding all the digestive biscuits into crumb. All right, it's a moderately fine crumb, all right? So now, as we talk about, we're going to fortify this crumb here into the crust, all right? So we're going to be doing a baby cheesecake. So we add in the layering flavors, all right? So here, we have one tablespoon of instant coffee and we have four tablespoons of cocoa powder. All right, so it would make a chocolate crust. We have some allspice or pimento berries. Going to add a dash of that. Some cinnamon powder as well. So again, we layer in the flavors. So as you cut through the cheesecake, it gives a more diverse and more complicated flavor profile. Now we only add in one cup of granulated sugar. All right, we have enough sweet going on with the cheesecake itself. So we are going to mix and incorporate this before we add the final ingredient. All right, and this here brings back so much memories. I uh, must, uh, must bring in Mrs. Creamy on this because Mrs. Oh, yes. Creamy is the is the nexus and change it away the reason for the season well yeah. mrs creamy is the reason for the cheesecake this cheesecake brings back a lot of memories for our wedding we did not have a traditional wedding cake we had cheesecake yes and correct. it was a strawberry cheesecake mm -hmm. i remember that so much and i enjoyed it so much that mm -hmm. after the wedding i asked him to make a cheesecake no, you're not telling the truth. <laughs> you said, not a buy. Oh, yes, yes, and yes. And when yes, I yes. saw what yes, it yes, was, yes. I said, no, nah, man, I could make yes, that. <laughs> All right. That is how the cheesecake came into being. All right, so we add in here. Satisfy me. All right, we add in here. This here is two cups butter. of melted butter. All right, and this is what will give the crumb that texture to be able to hold its shape for when it is we are baking the cake. So fellas, 12 years strong, so you're seeing what the reason and the rationale is, right? If the boss lady say she wants something and go and buy, mm -mm. come and check out food in the shop, <laughs> right? And get the recipes and learn to make. And since that day, I don't think she buy cheesecake unless it's some rare random occasion. But other than that, boss lady comes and she say, yo, I'm feeling for Mr. Cheesecake. And actually, that 
again was the impetus for starting Mr. Creamies itself. Because that there is where it is. Can you pass me a bottom, please? See that? It started with doing it for home. Then just so when relatives come. Yeah. And then when relatives come and they say, oh my God, it's so nice. The wedding was the genesis of knowing what it was. Because I was never really a fan. I never really much up on it too much. Right? But I know my wife liked it. And then at that point, when it is, she asks me about it. That is when it is I would have gone ahead and learned to make. And then we're coming out of that. When we keep on getting friends, family, relatives, we say, all right, somebody say, how much you go charge? <laughs> Never want to back down and with, with the economy as it is. <laughs> we developed a small micro-enterprise out of it. And that, is a, that was the foundation of Mr. Creamies. What we did was the strawberry, strawberry. cheesecake strawberry was, first. was first. And then, again, with actually as a friend of mine who was the best man in my wedding mm -hmm. there was a day we were just having a conversation and he was speaking about a pina colada mm -hmm. and i was like i wonder if i could make a pina colada cheesecake and i played with it once or twice and by about the third time we came up with a pina colada cheesecake with a pineapple topping so we ended up doing you know we ended up having like about seven different flavors strawberry Blueberry, chocolate, red velvet, right? Yeah, we had a mocha, apple pie, and what we making today? The Bailey's cheesecake, right? So as we mix here, you see, we come and I will use my hands and you see the texture. You want to be able to hold it and press and they be able to stay together, right? So that way we'll be able to mold it into the pan and at this point this is where I'll bring in Mrs. Creamy because this is actually her specialty right because she has the tender touch to be able to do this part and that is to form the cheesecake into the mold itself for what you'll be using yeah, form it along the bottom and then along the sides because it's a large cake so you gotta make sure the cross is a 10 inch pan, babe. Yeah. So it's a large cake, so you gotta make sure it have enough structure to be able to hold with the fill. Even it off with my fingers when I'm finished. So at this point, we could branch off into any outer two directions. If this was to be what you call a no bake cheesecake, as where you would use some sort of gelatin base. Right? What you can do, you add a layer of parchment paper or greaseproof paper in here and maybe some sort of red bean or some type of peas and, what, and then you put it in the oven to bake for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes at around 325 to 350. This is what you call blind baking and this will allow the crust to set. Right? Given that this is what, what this will be a baked cheesecake with eggs, we won't blind bake these. So we'll just set these aside and when we return, we're going into the filling. Right, so folks, we're back and we are going to start with the filling. Right, so as we said, we are making two cheesecakes today. And they are Bailey's cheesecake. Now, it's a 10-inch cake. And for that, we are going to use a lot of cream cheese. All right? Changing up for this recipe, we use very little flour. All right, even though it is a cake, we use very little flour. So right here, we have... 72 ounces of cream cheese and we're going to add that to our mixer all right all right so that there's 48 and this here is the 24. one over about right all right to that we are going to add two cups of sugar this is white granulated sugar we're going to add only six tablespoons of flour. This is just to give the mixture a better structure and body. And we're going to let him start the mix. Now, with cheesecake, one of the things is that we do not want to incorporate a lot of air, right? 
This is a very dense product. So you'll see, I will be keeping it at a very low beating speed and allow it to beat and cream together until we get a really smooth consistency without adding much air to it at all. By adding air to the mix, what happens? There are variations that does that, but it takes more flour because it needs more structure, right? We do not want to beat this for too long, either for too quickly or too vigorously, right? To make it uh, too dense or to incorporate too much flour at all. All right, so we allow this to beat. We already have the cream cheese. We have the flour and we have the sugar. All right, it may look like a lot, but as we said, this is making two large cheesecakes. These are two 10 inch cakes. All right, based on your serving size, you are getting a minimum of 10 slices each. I wouldn't say sustain or maintain. I believe that the cheesecake allowed me to have a marriage. Because I would have been married, but it would not have been, it would be a union. <laughs> right? So actually it did become, for quite a number of years before we started to, you know, focus a bit more on health, this was actually an anniversary treat. Right? Apart from sales and whatnot, that I would have to ensure that Mrs. Creamy has her vital supply, vital supply <laughs> of cheesecake for her anniversary. And if I'm to be completely honest, she was a bit of market research because I would test out the new flavors <laughs> at the anniversary. Right? So she would have worked as a form of market research. So as you see, we want to continue to cream this together. You see it's coming together nicely, but there's still a little bit of lumps in the butter. We'll be adding 10 eggs. All right, but we'll be adding the eggs one at a time and ensuring that they are fully incorporated and halfway through, we'll actually stop and scrape down the sides again all right, to ensure that we have a full proper mix. All right, so we're on the home stretch here, folks. So we have our butter here already well mixed, smooth, and incorporated. So now we're just going to add our flavorings. And here we have two tablespoons of our vanilla extract or vanilla essence mix and two tablespoons of rum extract right as we said this is a baby's cheesecake so we are going to add two cups of baby's irish cream right so we know we're not short on the booze today at all at all at all all right, and we're going to just slowly add this. One final little scrape down on the sides, just to make sure we have good incorporation of all the ingredients. All right, and after that final mix, so now we are ready to go to the oven. All right, so we're going to carefully remove the beater Right, and we're going to get our beater and we're going to start to add. And we just want to make sure that it's evenly distributed so we have an even cook time. All right, and now we go to the oven. All right, finally, as we go to the oven, all right, you'll see I have, well, there's a low pan, but this here is filled with water. All right, this here. I think the French call it a, a ban marie, right? This here is just a water a pan with some water, and this is for us to create a humid environment for a gentle. We don't want a dry heat in preparing our cheesecake. We want a nice humid environment. So I'm going to put this in into the oven first. I'll put it on the lower rack, right? And we'll bake here at around between 325 and 350 degrees. 
right? We'll check it at around an hour and a half, but we don't want to open the oven all the way wide open, right? Reason for that being, with that shocking temperature, we have the probability of the cake cracking on top, and we don't want that. All right, so we'll see you all guys back when you finish off. <laughs> Smile from air to air when Body you wipe right. cheesecake. So, folks, <laughs> uh, we just want to say thank you. We are back, and yeah. we just had to wrap up here with you guys say cheesecake. So after just short of two hours at 325. All right, I would recommend based on ovens, oven settings are different for different persons. All right, anytime after 130, we are looking for a slight jiggle. All right, when to know that it is set. All right, then you turn off your oven, we will have turned off the oven and allowed to cool somewhat. And this here, as you see the cheesecake here, now uh, this here is with our spiced chocolate ganache topping. So this topping was made using equal parts. Uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips and the heavy whipping cream mm -hmm. we would have brought the heavy whipping cream we used just short of it was 14 ounces of heavy whipping cream 14 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips whilst we bring the heavy whipping cream up to a simmer we added some cinnamon powder one teaspoon of cinnamon powder and one teaspoon of oil spice powder mm -hmm. to the heavy whipping cream that allows those flavors and spices to steep in the cream. And then we shut the heat and added our chocolate chips and allowed it to sit for 30 to 45 seconds. And then we start whisking it. The residual heat from the steeped cream allows for the chocolate to melt. And as it melts, you are able to mix it. The final step to that is we add one and a half teaspoons of butter and that is what allows us in the ganache to have this lovely sheen yes right as you see we have a nice lovely sheen that is with the addition of the butter and you whisk that in and it's poured uh, entire over the entire cheesecake now this cheesecake as lovely as it looks we cannot cut it right now right because we need for it to allow it to set both the cake and the, the chocolate ganache, ganache. all right so this is the end of Finish us here product. with the it's lovely. the anniversary, the anniversary cheesecake, right? The cheesecake is still working. The cheesecake <laughs> still. You let me as I'm counting. The cheesecake is still working. And one here, I need to. The cheesecake still working. All right, so folks, thanks a lot again from our kitchen to yours. Love in the house. Love in the house.